Okay, so let's talk about chapter chapter nine, cellular respiration. So cellular respiration, a catabolic pathway, a pathway that takes organic molecules and breaks them down and the carbon in them becomes or is released as CO2 and we're going to extract energy from them in the form of ATP also generates some heat so a process that your body is doing all the time as it says here life life is work your body even though you may not appear to be working your body is next time you're sitting at home watching TV and your mom or dad says hey lazy bone get up and do something you can say you can say I'll have you know my body is working hard right now it may not look like it but it is because it's always working now you the vast majority of the time are doing aerobic rep respiration which is with oxygen but there are some organisms and some select times when you and those things do air am I trying to write here aerobic respiration or fermentation so without oxygen but you know, most of the time you're doing cellular respiration with oxygen as we'll see is going to be able to be much more efficient for us than fermentation we'll see as we study cellular respiration and then photosynthesis we have a bunch of these redox reactions which you'll remember from chemistry where you have a compound that is being oxidized and a compound that's being reduced the thing that's being oxidized is known as the reducing agent and the thing that's being reduced is known as the oxidizing agent so the thing being oxidized has electrons stripped off of it and the thing that is being reduced is oxidizing the, meth uh, the methane in this case and so it's gaining electrons and we see that well with cellular respiration where oxygen is the oxidizing agent it is oxidizing glucose in the process it gains electrons and becomes reduced the um, glucose is being oxidized it loses electrons and it is essentially giving them up to the oxygen <clears throat> in the process so you've got things being oxidized which are the reducing agents and things that are being reduced which are the oxidizing agents the oxidizing agent is reduced and in this kind of catabolic process again we're able to extract energy from the glucose all right, here's an example of one of these molecules that we'll see here in cellular respiration, NAD nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, which, let's see what's happening to it. So here it is. Don't have to worry about this, what it looks like exactly. But let's see. We're going to be, what, adding some electrons to it and some protons, as you can see. Here's where a proton is added on, and we're going to gain a couple of electrons in the process. So NAD, we say, is being what is being reduced, the reduction of NAD. And we'll see that um, also this NAD is going to be regenerated from NADH, which therefore we have it being oxidized. So throughout this process, NAD is going to have electrons added on to it, reduced. And then later, the NADH is going to have electrons stripped off of it, oxidation. All right, so we'll see that all these electrons that are being taken off and given to things, they're going to be passed along what are known as electron transport chains. And this happens in both cellular respiration and photosynthesis. And the point of these electron transport chains is to extract the energy that's in these electrons in a stepwise fashion use that energy to generate a bunch of ATPs instead of just having that energy released in one big step 
which uh, can lead to just releasing a bunch of heat and or light energy. We're going to transfer it from one compound to another, use it to turn ADP into ATP again in a stepwise fashion. So we're controlling the release of this energy that, of course, originally was in sunlight, but then was converted into chemical energy and sugars. And then we're extracting and transferring that energy to ATP so that your body can do some work. So here's the overall picture of cellular respiration. There's three main steps here, glycolysis, citric acid cycle, and the electron transport chain. In each step we'll see we're going to generate some ATP um, and we'll see what happens along the way and how much of the ATP is generated in each step. In each step as well you can see, or at least in glycolysis and citric acid cycle, we're generating some of these electron carriers, which are going to take their electrons over the electron transport chain, where those energized electrons are going to be used to make some more ATP. All right, now notice we got some terms here. We've got substrate level phosphorylation and oxidative phosphorylation. And there's a, so in each case, we're adding phosphates onto ADP to convert it into ATP. That's the phosphorylation part. Well, this can happen a couple of different ways. The phosphate that's being transferred to ADP can come from a, a substrate that's going to be stripped off of, and that's what's known as substrate level phosphorylation. Or it can just come from the surrounding solution. That's what's known as oxidative phosphorylation. It's not being taken off of another molecule. So that's a slight difference there. Okay, so, so our first step is glycolysis and with glycolysis you want to keep in mind um, so it's the first step and it's a step that all living organisms share whether they're aerobic or anaerobic and so it's thought to be a good indicator of the common ancestry of all living things the fact that they all do glycolysis it presumably evolved once in an organism long ago and was passed down to all if it's descendants, all the things that are alive today. <clears throat> Here are the details of glycolysis, all the steps from taking glucose and converting it to pyruvate. We won't worry about all those steps and all those intermediate compounds and enzymes, but we'll just look at this overall picture of it, where we're taking those sugars. We have to sort of provide a little energy to get the process going. So this is sort of our energy investment phase, as it says here. But then what we're able to do is break that single glucose down into two three-carbon pyruvates and extract four ATPs and generate a couple of these NADHs, these electron carriers. So you can see we use two to get the process going but we put out four ATPs and two NADHs, so we have a net gain of two ATPs in glycolysis. This is pointed out here. Two ATPs, a couple pyruvates, a couple electron carriers, and some water here. And here you can see that three carbon pyruvate. All right. Now, citric acid cycle, or the Hans Krebs cycle. So, what's happening here now is we're going to, um, so in, over in glycolysis we have partially oxidized glucose, stripped some electrons off, they've been transferred to the NADs, but there's still a lot of energy in the pyruvate that we can make use of. So here in the citric acid cycle is where we complete the oxidation of the pyruvate. We're going to strip a bunch of electrons off, transfer them to these electron carriers, NADHs and FADH2, and therefore break down pyruvate into carbon dioxide. So because pyruvate is a three carbon molecule, we're going to generate three carbon dioxides from each one. There's this little initial step here of converting pyruvate into this compound called acetyl-CoA or acetyl-coenzyme A. 
which enters the Krebs cycle, where again we generate the rest of the CO2s and all these electron carriers, and for each pyruvate, we're going to generate an ATP. So, so far from our single glucose, we've generated two ATPs in glycolysis and two more in the citric acid cycle. So we've gained four so far. And there are the details of the citric acid cycle, all the different intermediate compounds and steps, which again we won't worry about. Now here you can see well the substrate level phosphorylation. ADP is converted to ATP. The phosphate is stripped off of this compound called GDP. <clears throat> okay. Now, let's see, maybe we can fit section four in here. Let's see if we can do that. All right. So now we've generated a little bit of ATP for net so far and a bunch of NADHs and FADH2s. So they're carrying our electrons. Oh, and by the way, glycolysis is happening outside the mitochondrion in the cytoplasm. Citric acid cycle is happening in the inner matrix of the mitochondrion. And our electron transport chain, the compounds of the electron transport chain, are located on that inner membrane. Ooh, that's a funky looking mitochondria. They're located on that inner membrane. They're embedded in that membrane. The NADHs and FADHs that are generated in the citric acid cycle and in glycolysis are converging here on that membrane. They're going to give up their electrons. So electrons are going to be passed along, and they're giving up energy as they do that. The electrons were going to end up being grabbed onto by oxygen, the final electron acceptor here, to generate some water. Now, what are we doing with all those electrons we're passing along, or what's, what's the energy in them being used to do? Well, the molecules, the proteins in this electron transport chain, some of them serve as proton pumps. They're using the energy from the electrons to pump protons into that space in between the membranes, in this space here. We're going to concentrate those hydrogen ions there, active transport. And then again, here's our oxygen, our final electron acceptor, being converted into water when it grabs those electrons. So we've concentrated all these hydrogen ions here in this inner membrane space. And now, they will want to go back across with the concentration gradient if they can. They can't get across the phospholipid bilayer because that's hard, but they can get through ATP synthase, this other protein that they travel through, and that stimulates ATP synthase to convert ADP into ATP, grabbing on that extra phosphate from the solution, oxidative phosphorylation. This process here of the hydrogen ions diffusing back through ATP synthase to create ATP is what's known as chemiosmosis. And here's a little look at it. This ATP synthase, this interesting protein that sort of acts like a, it's an enzyme, but it's an enzyme that acts like a little motor. It literally sort of rotates as the protons are coming through and it's generating the ATP. <clears throat> All right, so here we are. We have Completed the oxidation of glucose. We generated a little bit of ATP here, a little bit here, and some a lot of electron carriers along the way. And using the energy from those electron carriers, we're generating a whole bunch of ATPs here. So it's in the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation where we generate the vast majority of the ATP. You can see our grand total from cellular respiration is somewhere around 30 to 32 ATPs per glucose. We'll see how that compares to fermentation.